All right. You know what? Why not? Here we go. I'm about to release some information that's never been told before. So I got her. Neil Lane wasn't there right now, but I put a ring on it. Hi guys, how are you? Hey Lauren, doing well, how doing are you? Real good. I'm real good. I just noticed, uh, Kelly, are you wearing a KP necklace there? What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> so a brand just sent me this necklace and I had my girlfriend, I couldn't get my mail forever because I wasn't back in Chicago, but she brought it for me and I was like, this is the cutest thing. It's yeah. so cute. Well, I, this is such a good note to start out on because, you know, the biggest question I have for you guys is just, how happy are you? Why is this working so well? Because not only did you guys come off of a reality show, find a way to each other, then you get thrown into a pandemic you're probably spending tons of time together and then apart when Peter's working. Like, what's working about this? We've truly spent probably every single day with each other. I think that's what's just shown us that this is working. It's super just natural and organic. We have not gotten sick of each other. And I, <laughs> that's a huge, awesome sign. Um, Peter says that to everyone. He's like, it's kind of cool. I hung out with her for like almost four months and I'm still not sick of her. <laughs> like, well, that's a feeling sign. Yeah, and I've never had that. So it's just, yeah. It just, to it just be works. honest, Lauren, it's like, it's fun because we just get along. We're on the same page as everything. Um, he motivates me to do a lot. I motivate him to do a lot. And it's like, we're like best friends pushing each other forward to like better each other. And I feel like I I have I have a little bit more of a softer side and you have a little bit more of a harder side a little bit, but it works. <laughs> and like, she like makes me a little bit stronger and I like soften her up a little bit. The way we all sort of found out that Peter and Kelly were a thing was like those photos in Chicago and she slung over the back and it all happened. I actually told Peter not to come to Chicago and he asked at first and I was just like, no. And it's not it's not anything against him. It just sometimes it's not, it kind of sucks being in the spotlight because him and I were just hanging out as friends, truly, at that point in time. And um, you, I kind of had something in my head being like, oh my God, if I'm seen with him, then things are going to spark, which happened. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it sucks to be in the spotlight sometimes because I enjoyed him as a friend at that point in time. And it would have been nice to have him here. And my head was just telling me no for PR reasons. And then I was like, you know what? I got to stop caring about that so much. Yes, like come out, like please come out. Like is the offer still on the table? Like come see me. Who made the first move? How did this transition? Like, was it you, Peter? You, why did you want to go to Chicago? I need the, the love story now. Long story short, we met up. I officially got her number. And, uh, and then she had to leave uh, back to Chicago. We just kept texting. And then I remember I'm on my couch just watching TV and we're talking and like, I just had this idea like, hey, like, let me come out and spend some time with you. And uh, yeah, you've always been there for me. Let me return the favor. She said no. And I was like really bummed about that. Um, I remember going to bed and then I woke up and I got a text like, is the offer still on the table? Oh. And <laughs> and then I hopped on, uh, I remember I like looked on my uh, my dad's passes because um, Bill doesn't fly directly to Chicago from LA. So I hopped on a United flight on my dad's passes. Next flight got out there and uh, and yeah. And he wouldn't leave. <laughs> and then I went, she couldn't, she couldn't get rid of me. Um, I loved it though. Like he would go back to LA and without me even being like, do you want to come back? He'd be like, so I'm coming back. Like I'm leaving Saturday. I'll be back Tuesday. And, and I was like, perfect. I love seeing how happy you guys are. I saw one quick moment where it looked like Peter, you were giving her some kind of big rose in one of the videos. What was that? Oh, well, that was in, in, in yeah. Florida, yeah. My neighbors are big fans of the show, so they found out we were down there, and um, they brought them over, and they're like, give her this. I had to give her the final rose, so yeah. that was me making up for it. So <laughs> Kelly now has the final rose. Yeah, I compensated. It was very large. It had to be the big one. Are we in love? <laughs> are, you, are you kidding? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I, you want to know how I told her I loved her for the first time? Yes. All right. So I got her. Neil Lane wasn't there right now, but <laughs> I got her this little gumball machine ring and uh, we we're having a pool dad and I took her back. Just to, actually, I sat on the couch that you, that you told me not to come to Chicago on and you found me out, but I took you to that same couch and uh, I told her, I want her to remember this day from this gumball machine ring is the day I told you that I love you. And that was it. There's always something about Peter that I knew I just was like madly in love. Like I just knew we would get along and it's weird because I even told him, going on the show, it's harder for him to see because he didn't even really like get to know me that well on the show. But like I saw a lot of like compatibility things that added up between him and I, but he doesn't necessarily know that. He didn't know me. But like I saw him on Hannah Brown season. I saw him on just like 
news articles and how his family dynamic is and what he's interested in and all that stuff. And I was like, wow, he really adds up for me. But like, it's hard to convey that on a show to be like, hey, you and I would really get along. And he was like, I'm <laughs> Without looking like psycho. <laughs> you did a really good job of not coming off weird. But yeah, she did say that a lot. Like we just, we work, like I see this working and I wish I just would have listened. This is pretty insane. We're at the exact place where I just randomly ran into Kelly. Um, Coming from an after party from a high school reunion, she was coming back from a wedding. When you guys look at your story, I mean, you meeting each other at that wedding and then where you are now, do you ever kind of play the mental game of, wait, what if I just like walked away with her at that wedding? Like, where would you be now? Yeah. It's funny because this is something that's said a lot, like, oh, you know, um, I wish you would have just ran away with Kelly when you first met her and there was no point for you to be The Bachelor, but I actually highly disagree with that. And I think that from going on the show, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn what you want, what you don't want. You learn who to trust, who not to trust um, in like an everyday setting. And the thing I love about him is he does have like such a pure heart, but sometimes that can be um, taken advantage of. And I think that coming off of this show, he has learned so much. I have learned so much, but it like works for us now. I think we both grew insane amounts throughout the show, throughout the experience. Would it have been amazing to just start the relationship right there? It would have, but things truly happen for a reason. And I'll, I'll always, you know, believe in that. And we're very happy now. So that's all that matters. Well, yeah, Kelly, you were the one telling Peter on camera, Peter, relationships don't have to be hard. Not every relationship has to sit here and be like jumping through hurdles and super hard and all this stuff. Like it can be easy and so could be fun. Peter, like, did you have to learn that? I mean, do you feel like you kind of, if you look back, do you think, wow, maybe I went on the show, I learned that. And then that experience kind of made me ready for this relationship. I think there's some truth to that for sure. I think on the show, I was a little bit I was caught up. I was a little in over my head. I was, uh, there definitely was some, you know, confliction and confusion for me just because I, again, I was giving so much of myself to every single relationship I was trying to and I was getting so invested that um, I think I almost lost sight of really what just a beautiful, good relationship can be. Peter, your finale. I mean, Kelly was in the audience. <laughs> Is that not the craziest thing? Like that, I, I think about that all the time. Like that's just the craziest thing to me, I know. Kelly, what was going through your mind that night? Do you think you could have ever told that woman and would she have believed that you two would be together now? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way in hell. Um, I, like, I didn't know what to do. I was just sitting there like watching it all like go down. I was like, oh my lord, I'm glad I am not involved here. And that's the only, that's the only thought that I had. I was like, wow, this is, there's a lot of drama going down. If you want to be with a woman, you need to become a real man. Peter, what was your headspace then versus now? You know, I don't even know, have you guys watched that finale? Did you ever watch it back? Just a little bit, but honestly, no. I haven't watched it again since. Well, how do you compare those two Peters and those two Kellys? Oh my God, <laughs> I, yeah, complete 180. Like I, I truly am in such just a good place. Um, just so confident in this relationship and, you know, just so extremely thankful for her. I, I can't, uh, I truly, I remember like that feeling that night and that was a tough night for so, so many of us and never would have imagined having this happiness just a couple months later with Kelly. I remember interviewing Kelly, I think the night after your finale um, and she said, well, Barb was wanted to talk to me at the finale. She said, I'm your biggest fan. Barb's a huge fan. <laughs> she stands Kelly. Barb loves Kelly. We know this. We've seen the cheers. <laughs> Give me a K, give me an E, oh. an L, an oh. L, E, Y, what do you get? How much was Barb like, get her number, Peter, and <laughs> go to Chicago? <laughs> Oh my you know, my mom was 100%, always 100% supportive about that. Um, when she found out I got her number, she was like, you could see she was cheering on. Um, all right, you know what, why not? Here we go. I'm about to release some information that's never been told before, because this is actually not that stuff. But. <laughs> Um, this is actually kind of funny. So I remember being in the van, going to the hospital in uh, in Costa Rica when I split my forehead open. I had to call my mom uh, because I knew that if anything got out before she heard from me, she was gonna freak out. She's gonna be on the next flight out there to Costa Rica. So I'm calling her and uh, you know, I'm trying to talk to her and she's like, I can tell she's trying to like, well, after she found out that my head was okay and we're all good, she was trying to like 
give me hints of like who she liked, who she liked. And she kept saying, me gusta la niña de, 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 mi, uh, de mi ciudad from Chicago. That's what she was saying. She was giving me hints on the phone that she liked Kelly. Like, and I, I like the girl from my city. Yeah, and, uh -huh. uh, and she just kind of slip them in there. And yeah, so that's how far back that that love, I guess, for Kelly goes. Yeah, it's a little little bit of information that nobody knows. I think your mom might be the person who invented the phrase, mother knows best. <laughs> Seriously, I know, to the listener. But. How hard was that for your mom? I don't know how much you've talked to Barb about, you know, I know she was saying pick Hannah Ann, and obviously she, she did not think you and Madison were a good fit. Everyone that knows him knows that it's, it's not, you know, it, it's not gonna work. So how hard was that for her when she'd been into Kelly this whole time? Like, do you think she was genuinely into you being with Hannah Ann or was it kind of all a struggle for her at that point? No, she she definitely fell in love with, with Hannah Ann. All those feelings were very, very genuine. And again, just to, like, this is just, this is more of a joke. Yeah. Maybe. And she was just, it was a quick thing. Like, it was kind of funny. How did she react when you sent Kelly home? <laughs> So my mom hasn't watched that episode yet, and she and she won't watch it. That's that's not happening. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. When I thought about it. I don't think I could watch it either at this point. See, uh, I laugh. At, like I don't. It doesn't really bother me. Like, it bothers me. I couldn't watch it. It um, does. Why? Tell me. I just. I feel like I'd be a wreck. Like an absolute mess. Because I actually. Yeah, I remember that vividly too. I remember walking into that car and like something still just. I look back on that, did not feel right. And that sounds so cliche. I don't think I've ever even told you that, but it just like, I I remember like holding her hands and like looking in her eyes and just like her look, I did, it just like, it did feel right. Kel, when you look back on your time on the show, are you kind of a little blown away that you were even on a reality show with the personality that you have? For sure, <laughs> a thousand percent. Like it's just, there's a lot of things that I just don't think would translate well on a reality show. Um, and and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like, but I definitely struggled. I, I'm not like regretting it. I don't regret going on the show in any way. I'm like the biggest Bachelor fan ever and I always will be, but I feel like while just from history, you've seen some relationships through the show, it works and you get your real life. It doesn't work just because of the the, the relationship being romanticized and just all that comes with being on the show, it's amazing. For us, it's been the exact opposite. For whatever reason, we just didn't really get to know each other super well on the show. It wasn't our cup of tea, but in real life after, it's just been, it's been seamless and it's just, it's been kind of cool. How different would things have been if you'd kept Kelly on the show? I mean, Kelly, you weren't like thriving. Do you think you would have stayed the whole time? I talk to Peter about this all the time. There's some things that like, I don't know how I'd handle a lot of different things, like even, Fantasy Sweet Week, like I probably would have maybe felt awkward, you know? Um, so who knows how my head would have been or what I would have done then. I feel like if I would have kept her for hometown, like it would it would have been us in the end. If I would have met her family, I, I'd have been sold. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> I don't know about that, Lauren. My family is not easy to deal with. Like, I love like, four like, brothers. I, exactly, like that's what I said to him. Like he's told me that before and I was like, Peter, to be completely honest, like I was able to give you a heads up and like give you a description on each brother, my sister, my parents, like don't take this to heart. They'll probably make like rude comments, but like just just brush it off. Like a, that's a lot of my family. They're very outspoken. There's so many of them. Like he would have probably walked in that house and been like, what <laughs> the heck is going on? No, I would have been yeah. <laughs> But somehow he deals with it. Not many people can, but it's, it's a, it's a, Strange dynamic. Her mom is absolutely amazing. Her and Barb, oh my God. Those yeah. two. We've got have... those two Chicago gals. They're my mom both. Does not have a filter <laughs> at all. Oh my God. We need to get your mom on TV. Barb oh, and your mom yeah. next to each other in an audience. I, I honestly am like, I'm, I'm so disappointed too because like the world didn't get to meet your mom. What has she said about Peter and this relationship? Does the Flanagan family approve? She actually loves him. And like, and to the point where Rain. like, I have to like almost make fun of her. Like when Peter comes around and she's on speakerphone, her like voice yeah. goes up and she's like, hey Peter. And I was like, why, do, why don't I get that? She's such a sweetheart. It's hilarious. She'll be like, hey Cal. And I'll be like, hey. And she'll be like, hey Peter. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I get it. <laughs> what was kind of the biggest thing, the most important thing to talk about that you worked through that got you here now? Peter was like convinced that I didn't even like him. Um, <laughs> I wonder why, I wonder why. <laughs> I'll be napping here. See you in a bit.
you know, my personality is very laid back. I'm not really into the drama, so that's one thing. But he took that as like, she's just here for a vacation. She doesn't care about me. And that wasn't the case. It was just like, when I'm not seeing him, I'm gonna chill. Um, so I think that was the first conversation we had was he was like, did you even like me? And I was like, of course I did. Yeah. And then just kind of explained like, now that he's gotten to know my personality, it, it makes a lot more sense. But back then he didn't really understand any of it. I think tough for us is, or has been tough. We've been doing really good with it moving forward. It's just like, you know, people like to say, oh, she wasn't your first choice. And I know for Kelly, it's been tough to see. Listen, at the end of the day, this is, a, it's a reality TV dating show. This is not real life, normal life. So. I don't know, we've just been a, done a, a good job of just, you know, reassuring each other and just explaining why I, I did things the way yeah. I did and, and owning up to my faults and, and just being a better person moving forward. I do have to have a little bit of understanding because you, you come off the finale and, and you're with Madison and then I think it was either 24 or 48 hours later you guys were done. What was that turnaround? What, what went down? I know they say, oh, it was 24, 48 hours. That was the shortest relationship ever. We never committed to a relationship. We were just going to talk things through. And that's what occurred, um, you know, in the next couple of days. And we went our own separate ways. And, you know, I know I don't look back. She doesn't look back. Um, but I think some people lose. They think that we got back together. We never were back together. Like, where are you guys at right now with, with Madison, with Hannah Ann? Because, Kelly, I know that you'd been friendly with them. And there was a little bit of social media stuff where I think Madison had made some comments. And, Peter, you said you know there's more to this story. So what was the more to the story? Yeah, I was I was actually really close with both girls on the show. Um, coming off the show, it's actually funny because the girls that you are like very close with on the show aren't necessarily all the, the girls that you're like extremely close with off the show. I have no ill will towards Madison. I think she's a great girl. Um, it's just this whole, the whole situation is like awkward. It was an awkward, weird situation that we were all going through. And yeah, we all signed up for it. So we had to live through it, but um, truly no ill will towards anyone. I want the best of them, of course. Yeah. And that same same thing goes for Hannah Ann, a hundred percent, so. Uh, yeah, I was texting with Hannah Ann the other day. Like, her and I are totally yeah. fine. Did you shoot him a text before you guys went official or was it like, it's just happening? I was in communication with <laughs> Hannah Ann because her and I, her and I were, um, texting and I just said, I gave her a call and told her exactly what happened. She said, that's fine. She's like, I thank you so much for calling me. Uh, I really respect you and our friendship. Peter, like when you do look back, both choosing Hannah Ann and, and then trying things again with Madison, like what was that headspace? Where were you at and what was driving those decisions, especially as you look at how happy you are now by having made different decisions? I was confused. I was very confused and I'm not ashamed to admit that at all. Um, I, you know, I, I, I've said this a couple of times, but I almost feel like it would have been odd if I wasn't confused, you know, going through that many relationships in such a short amount of time, it's super tough. The Bachelor was an amazing experience that I'll never forget and always be so grateful for, but really messed with me. Really, really messed with me. And it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. If I could do it again um, and guarantee she was gonna be there, I would do it so differently. Oh my God, you have no idea. I know everyone's called me a people pleaser in this and you need to be stronger <laughs> and just do things. Yes, and you guys are right, 100%. I am a new man in that regard, I promise you. Um, but I don't know, just w with Kelly, it just, I literally, it sounds so cliche. I can just be myself. She truly like, she gets me and she's my biggest fan and she supports me and she's always there for me. And she, you know, I, I know I have my partner in crime forever. And like, I, I don't know, I just, I've never had this confidence from a relationship. I do, I do acknowledge you, yeah, I've grown a lot, but I'm not saying it's all on me either. It's, it's her, like it's truly Kelly. And just like, she is, I truly believe the perfect person for me. And I feel so blessed to, to have this have worked Aww, out. he's sweet. I mean that though. Well, Kelly, was there a period where he did have to gain trust back with you or anything like that because he had sent you home and you'd seen him do these other things and finish out the show in other ways? Um. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's every relationship. Like, trust is a huge thing. Um, but if you just hear each other out, it's a lot easier. There's a lot of things that goes on that many people don't know um, and how a lot of things actually panned out. You know, no one really knows that, but we've sat down and like talked everything through. Um, and it makes a lot more sense if you're on our end than if 
Publix. <laughs> and I'm still working to make it up to her for, for not faking her and uh, I'm never gonna stop, so. You guys' is ending, nobody saw coming. <laughs> no one, I didn't tell really you didn't, no one. People like for some reason refused to believe that I wasn't gonna be with Peter throughout everything that happened. Like there's so many people that I meet that were like, I still knew even when you went home that it was gonna be you guys. And I was like, that is true. I was like, what? what? I didn't even I, know, like, I don't what get are you talking either. about? But so many people say that to me. How final is this? Like, are you guys moving in together? I think you're at Kelly's apartment in Chicago right now. What's the plan? What does a year from now look like? Yeah, we are in Kelly's apartment right now. We <laughs> uh, we do want to move in with each other. Hopefully New York City, uh, early fall, uh, maybe like September, late summer. Um, we'd love to live in New York City. And yeah, this is, this is very serious, obviously. Um, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> Just jumping right into it. <laughs> do you guys talk about things like marriage and kids and stuff like that? Do you have those discussions? We talk about it openly, like, oh, when we're this age or something like that, like even moving in moving in together, New York's like a, a big deal, you know? And we definitely talk as if like it's long-term, like it's not going anywhere. And I think that just is totally fine with us. Again, we're not on a reality show anymore. We could take time, like we don't need to rush anything. Yeah. We wanna make sure like each other is in the right headspace and there's nothing wrong with that. We're happy and we're living life. Honestly, just by going on the show, it's kind of like pushing me to go slower if anything, instead of like yeah, rushing no, anything. Absolutely no rush. I'm super excited to take this next step with, with Kel and move to New York and just see what adventures await. And, you know, we have so many dreams together to, to just travel and obviously travel is one of our biggest passions together. The world's at a weird halt and stop and go right now with the pandemic, but you guys have shared some of this travel content. How much do you see that being part of your futures and your careers? Uh, will you like devote full time to that? Or are you going to keep flying and, and being the legal eagle? What's the plan? <laughs> um, he, of course, he's always going to fly. He's never, he's never going to quit that. I'm currently still working. It's super, super slow. Our office is actually still closed down. So that's why everyone's working remotely. And we figured out that working remotely is actually a lot easier than then doing stuff on the side with him. So I don't necessarily need to be in the office. And, um, you know, he has a lot of days off when he flies. So the whole travel yeah. thing just works perfect for our schedule. And yeah. right now, it's, I mean, it's a really, it's, it's really sad, obviously, what's going on. The airline industry has been, you know, devastated, as everyone knows. Uh, so I'm actually not even flying right now, most likely until hopefully October. Hopefully there's no furloughs for the pilot group. Uh, so staying positive and that there's, there is a recovery. But um, yeah, I plan on doing that, you know, until I have to retire. And on the side though, I really, we're both really excited to, uh, to kind of, yeah, we want to spin the globe, like we call it, and just go and share our passion around the, you know, all this amazing spots around the world and do it together. And um, just let people, yeah, live kind of vicariously through those videos if they want. and. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be it's a lot of fun. fun. Would you guys want to do not just more videos, but a show? And would you do a, a travel reality show? Or are you a little gun shy about reality TV now? <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, go slow. Lauren, yeah. Lauren, I don't think you realize how awkward I actually am when like cameras come out, like on video. Even when people stop us in public, I'm like behind his back <laughs> hiding. I would like, love to have a reality show just following Kelly Ron around, seeing how awkward she gets in public. It's absolutely hilarious. Like I don't like when there's so much attention on me. Like when, when people are like, oh my God, and like the whole room is on me, I don't feel comfortable. Uh, I wanna ask you guys too about your, uh, your thoughts for Claire. Claire's season is starting next. Um, she's going to be doing it all with a pandemic in mind. I, how could you guys see the show potentially changing with that? I think it's going to be a massive difference. I think the first thing is the age. Um, I think that there's going to be a lot less drama according to, you know, the contestants coming in and you're a little bit older. Things that are important to you when you're 24 versus 40 are completely different. That's a good point. Um, and I think that you care less about little things and the bigger picture is more in mind. Because of the pandemic delaying things, everyone knows who The Bachelorette is. And so that's only to her benefit, you know, only bring out hopefully, you know, men that are really, really 
you know, actually there for her. And so I think this has the potential to be an amazing season. Personally, I think it might be a little bit different. Going on a show like this, you get so many endorphins going on these like lavish dates and these really crazy dates. And when you're with someone, it makes you bond with them better just because you guys are doing something so out of the ordinary and something so out of your regular day life that mm -hmm. it like almost convinces you to fall in love with that person even if you're not as compatible. So again, going on Claire's season, the fact that they're not gonna be able to do these lavish dates and stuff like that. They'll still do lavish dates. They'll do the bachelor, lavish dates, but babe, they can't like leave a resort. Yeah, I mean, so, we don't know that for sure, but. Maybe, if, yeah. if this is my guess. If they can't leave a resort, I think it's gonna be more focused on are we compatible instead of like, oh my God, look at how amazing this mountain is. And I really, I think for sure, and I'm really excited for it, I think it's gonna be an amazing love story. And it's gonna get back to that, and I'm so excited for that. Uh, Peter, you had a wild ride. Um, yeah. It's in advance, but what advice do you have for who we already know to be our new bachelor, Matt James? Matt James, yeah, I uh, I'm very I haven't met him actually. I just reached out to him on Instagram, but seems like an awesome guy from what I've heard from Tyler. Just make de decisions for himself, nobody else. Don't try to please anyone. Don't try to please uh, you know the fans or, or production or just do it for you. And um, I wish you know I would have taken my own advice and done that on my season. Um, it's so easy just to feel the pressure, um, you know, from the show. And again, it's, yeah, it's entertainment and whatnot, but it's also, it's your life more importantly. And it's your relationship and it's potentially the person you're gonna spend the rest of your life with and don't lose sight of that. I don't know if you've kept in touch with Victoria Fuller, but were you surprised to learn her and Chris Souls are dating? And have you talked to her at all? Yes, you talked to her a little bit more. I've talked to her a little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for them, good for them. Um, I think Kelsey was the one that set that up. I think Kelsey may have had a connection with Chris and put them in contact and hey, good for them. I think everything's great and everything's working out and I think she's madly in love with him and um, good for both of them, you know, that makes yeah. me happy. I really like Chris. I've met him a couple of times and really good dude. So I'm really happy for the both of them. So let's go over it. She's wearing the necklace. By the way, Peter, how much do you love that she wears that necklace? Oh my I God. I just got it. I just got it. Yeah, I'm so excited about it. Is. I'm more happy that she wears this ring now. She hasn't taken this off yet, so I love and that. And I was going to say, you did end up putting a ring on her finger. <laughs> I did. It wasn't the uh, the finger I thought it was going to be, but yeah, I, I did. <laughs> so we'll see, what, we'll see what's in the store. It's like you guys kind of oh, got to work oh, everything it's out. It's great. Yeah, it, it's literally been perfect. Like, it's been unreal. and. I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly, to start the relationship. 